Hello everyone, welcome back to Pediatric Survival Swim. My name is Allison and I am a survival swimming specialist here in Bradenton and Sarasota, Florida. Um, today I wanted to make kind of a informational how-to video um, for survival swim instruction at home through you, the parent. And I think this is going to be um, a survival swimming series that I'm going to put together for you. Um, and I'm doing this one to provide education to you and um, to friends and family and whoever has children. Um, drowning is the leading cause of accidental death in children under the age of five and the second cause of unintentional death in children from five um, to 12. So, um, and we're also seeing uh, an increase in our teenagers drowning as well. Um, so those survival swimming skills that you get, even from when you're a baby um, or a toddler, um, those, you can really build upon those and you can use those skills even through adulthood. Um, so survival swimming skills isn't a one and done thing. It's something that needs to be built upon um, until the child, um, or teenager, whoever it is that is getting the instruction, is um, comfortable in being able to use those life-saving rescue skills in an emergency situation. So um, today, uh, excuse my background, I'm also an online teacher, So, uh, and this is my new... Um, my new setup, my new classroom. So uh, as you can see, like this is drywall, <laughs> like we have to finish this out, but um, this will suffice for now. Um, so I wanted to bring in my handy assistant and um, this is my four-year-old's daughter. She has a four-year-old daughter's uh, doll. She has makeup on, but this is the largest doll I could find. Um, so I wanted to start off the first video um, with the most important thing that we teach your children in survival swimming lessons. And this is going to be breath control. Um, breath control is very important because as some of you know, drowning can take place in as little as 20 seconds. So it takes 20 seconds for the child to become um, unconscious and um, the epiglottis gland to fail and water to enter the lungs. And so you're going to have a whole slew of problems there if that happens. Um, so we want to prevent that by starting out first with um, uh, breath control. Now, um, a survival swim instructor, most, I, I do, I um, teach breath control, breath holding. I do not teach blowing bubbles. Um, lots of um, lots of swim methods and swim training and swim instructors do teach bubble blowing and this is to um, help a child calm down, start to work on rhythmic breathing. But um, this happens in kind of older students that are able to mimic you um, and you don't want bubble blowing um, for two reasons. One, um, well, maybe three, just depends on how you look at it. Um, number one, your baby is buoyant in the water. So we want to create buoyancy by filling up those lungs with air. Um, so as soon as your child hits the water, we want those lungs to be filled completely full as they can be with air. Now, sometimes I do get babies that have... Um, that get the water up the nose or in the mouth. So we do kind of teach a, which is a small um, blow out if they are not able to plug their nose very well. Um, but we do not teach blowing out all of your bubbles and all of your air. So this makes your baby less buoyant in the water, less able to get on top of that water to go from um, a downward position to a float. Um, many times the child will also fall in this way, vertical. This is what we call the drowning position. So this is very popular with children who are put in puddle jumpers. Um, so what we do not want to teach is blowing out your bubbles, blowing out all of your air, because what happens when we blow out all of our air? We continue to sink. Okay, so that's what we teach with diving. You want to blow out some of your air so that you remain on the bottom of the ground uh, floor of the surface at the bottom of the pool. 
Um, so we don't want to teach that because some children don't have been in pedal jumpers and they don't know how to get from a vertical position to a swim position. So if they blow out their air, what they normally do when they fall in is they're going to lean their head back and try to come up for air. But if they are blowing out their air, they are getting further and further from the top. Okay, so they're sinking. So, and then they're not able to get back up enough to get those couple of breaths. So we do not want to teach blowing out the air. Okay, um, so sorry, I lost my train of thought here. Um, okay, so we want to really work on holding the breath. Um, and so that's what we teach, number one, in survival swimming instruction. And we teach that to prevent the secondary drowning, the dry drowning that people often talk about. Um, and that's when um, the water gets into the lungs and causes problems, causes the secondary um, drowning of some sorts. So once they're out of the pool, out of the water, they have exited um, from the pool. So breath control is extremely extremely important and we don't do that by blowing bubbles. We want to hold our air so that we become more buoyant and light and we stay at the surface of the water and um, so that we don't sink to the bottom and we can come back up easier for air instead of going the wrong way. Um, okay, so uh, I don't have my pool right now. It is November and it's cold. And we're actually in the middle of a hurricane right now. So um, it's actually kind of quiet at my house, which is kind of scary. Um, so um, we're going to kind of demonstrate with this doll today. So hopefully I can do a part two where we are in the water and I'm demonstrating with my... Um, with my daughter or my son. Um, my son is six, my daughter is four. They've been swimming since they were a year old. And so I do um, provide swimming instruction for children that are six months and older. Now, I do not, do not, do not recommend that you put your six month old through this training yourself. If you would like them to have survival swimming skills, I would seek out a professional. Um, we've had extensive training in psychology and um, physiology of children. So we know what cues to look for. We know what medical issues need to be examined closely. And we know with each breath what we need to be looking for and counting for and really um, monitoring. So um, I would not uh, suggest that. I would suggest if your child is starting to walk um, and your child is over the age of 12 months, which is what the American Pediatrics suggests, is that your child is over the age of one after his or her first birthday. Um, and that's what I would suggest too. If your child is not walking at 12 months, then I would push it out a little more until your child starts to walk. Now, of course, there's going to be those with um, older children who have a backyard pool um, who are in more dire need of swim lessons than somebody else. Um, who This is maybe their first child and they may not have issues um, with... Uh, another child opening the door, leaving it open, not properly shutting the gate, um, but accidents do happen. So um, I would seek out a survival swimming instructor first. Um, and if you cannot find one in your area, maybe this is what um, you need. So um, this video is for you. Okay, so I have my doll here. She's not quite the size of a 12 month old, um, but that's okay. This is the biggest doll that I have. Um, and I also dressed her for you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so the first thing you want to do with your baby is you want to establish that the water is, um, the water isn't necessarily safe but um, to remain calm in the water. So you want to get your baby calm. So the first thing that I like to do with my babies who have never been in a survival swimming lesson before is have them playing on the steps. Um, not standing on their own, but maybe sitting on that top step, just kind of playing with um, a few toys. Once they're calm and used to the water, you want to pull them in and you want to pull them close to you. Um, this is probably going to be done on your child or your grandchild. So um, they're going to be pretty comfortable with, 
comfortable with you um, as opposed to a stranger that they're getting swim lessons from. Um, so they're, they're playing on your emotions, they're watching you, they're seeing how you interact with them in the water. So happy faces, positive attitude, and relax. Uh, another important note for this is that the lesson should be no more than 10 minutes long. If your lesson is over 10 minutes long, you're going to risk um, the child being exhausted and fatigued, which is going to result in a um, potentially dangerous situation, um, or they're not going to perform, they're actually going to regress. So I always say 10 minutes. If it's not what you want, it's okay. You can try again tomorrow. It's not going to hurt anything um, to try again tomorrow. So, and I, I do say that these lessons are consistent, uh, probably five days a week, if possible. Consistency is key. Try for the same time. Try for the same, um, try to do it after a nap when they're not tired. Um, and try not to let your child eat probably an hour and a half or more before the swim lesson because this breath control is not a one and done thing. It's going to be continuous for the first week. Um, so you really want to monitor your baby's diet and cut out um, anything that may make their stomach upset. And I'll uh, leave a list of those items that I would not feed your child um, during the swim lesson or before a swim lesson um, down below. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to have our baby playing on the steps, and then once they're comfortable, we're going to take our baby and just put them um, neck deep. And you can get neck deep too if you want to and just kind of play around and say, you know, this is safe, this is fine, you are with me, and we're going to do this together. Um, so the next thing I want you to do is establish hand targets for your baby onto the step. The face is going to be above the water for now. Um, just for the beginning. Okay, so we're going to go up your hands, your placement for your hands are under the armpits right here, under the breastbone right here. And um, your cue, you can do ready, set, go. You can do one, two, three. I do ready, set, go. Ready, set, and go. So sooner or later, you're going to be able to eliminate those verbal cues and they're going to rely on these physical cues. So ready, you're holding on, not super tight, but enough to where they understand that they're being um, taken hold of. Can, this kind of makes them feel safe as well. So ready, and then opening up and creating pressure on the side so you still have your baby is set and then pushing off is go. Ready, set, go. And then pushing towards. And you're going to have your baby reach for that step and make sure their hands are placed firmly down on the step. Once they reach the step, reinforce that with a hand pushing down onto the step. And you're gonna do that a couple times and reward your baby with some play time, um, some, some snuggles and some warmth. Um, and this needs to be a positive experience. Um, and no puddle jumpers. No, no. Number one, no puddle jumpers. Okay, so once your baby is comfortable with this, you're going to do this a couple of times until your baby starts to understand both hands on the top step. Once that's done, I want you to introduce the water to your baby. Ready, set, go. And I want you to introduce them to the mouth. Okay, you can also, if your baby is under age, you can, under the age of one, you can practice these things in, um, in the bathtub, just the vertical placement with just hardly any water at all where um, your baby's just having some tummy time. Um, make sure though, this, is, this could be very dangerous, a baby can drown within two inches of water. So you need to monitor them, make sure that water is very, very minimal, um, and they're able to very clearly get their neck up, but they're playing in that vertical position just for a few minutes, and then you can set them back. Also, another great tip is pouring that water over their head during bath and shower time. This is going to also help with breath control. This gets the <gasps> factor going on and um, this is going to help um, later on when you start your survival swim. So um, once we get the mouth wet a couple of times out of the nose, um, you're going to start ready, set, go. So what you're going to do when you say ready, set, go 
is um, when you start to put them under the water, whether that be the mouth or the nose or the entire face, is you're going to be counting rhythmic breathing, okay? So you're waiting for the chest. You're waiting and you're waiting for their inhale. And before on the exhale, then you dunk them in not dunk them. Okay. So you glide them in. That <laughs> was a bad, bad reference there. Dunk them in. No. So you're just going to glide them in. You're going to glide. And if your baby's upset, maybe you just glide that face. Just glide that face over. That's what I do to my little babies that are not quite happy. I take them from the side and I just glide their face in. And then after um, they've calmed down a couple times, after they start to get the hang of it, what we're doing, then I'm going to introduce the mouth, and then I'm going to introduce the nose, and then I'm going to introduce the entire face. You're not dipping them down low, way under the water. You're skimming. You're skimming the top of the water and up. This should be no more than a second. Um, this is not um, something that we're trying to go under the water and we're creating this long, drawn out process. It's very quick. You're just showing your baby really quick that this is what we do. You're going to pick them up. You're going to give them praise. They may be coughing a little bit because it does take a couple tries. So you are going to pat your baby. You're going to wait till their breathing is back on track before you introduce another um, placement into the water. If you feel like your baby is really upset, then maybe you can take a break or, or maybe you can go back to the arms on the wall. So we're working away from, from us right now. Eventually we'll work towards us, um, but that's a little bit um, different. So we want to start with working away because it's going to be the easiest. So ready, set, and go. Okay. Um, so, uh, once your baby is ready, it may, um, you may get it on an inhale, um, which is fine, but you really need to focus on that, those rhythmic breathings and the exhale. So when your baby is breathing in and when they have that full air, that full breath, then, and it seems like their baby's air is going out, then you place under. It's not going to be pretty the first time. It's not going to be this flow. You're going to have a little bit of trouble, especially if your baby is crying. Um, but that's okay because remember, crying means air. And that's what we um, want in the end, right? We want a baby that is able to self-rescue and, um, and learn these skills. So breath control is number one because... Um, if your baby blows out all of his air, that 20 seconds is going to be your child. So you want to make sure and establish breath control before you establish any kicking, any floating, anything at all. 10 minute lesson on the steps. Um, and once your baby establishes that breath control, um, and they can do it three times in a row, let them out. You're done. And I want you to do that continuously for a couple of days before you move on to the next lesson. And um, I'll do the next uh, part two to this in another video, or maybe it's part three when I can get um, my child back in the water um, and show you demonstrate that. Um, and please let me know if you have any questions. We can work through this together. Um, I'm definitely an advocate for water safety, um, even if that's at home instruction. Um, and this video is mainly for my people up north. Um, I have a lot of friends up there who just say we don't have any survival instructors up here anywhere. Um, they're just, it's not something that's common because our swim season is only, you know, two, three months out of the year. It's not like Florida where you can swim almost year round, um, and be fine. So, um, they have swim lessons, but sometimes those bad habits can transition um, when you're going to, from a, a regular group uh, swim lesson that's not survival into a survival lesson. Sometimes those seem to butt heads and um, you create uh, an atmosphere that you weren't 
quite hoping for because there are some distinct differences in um, a regular traditional swim lesson versus a survival swim lesson. Um, so please feel free to reach out with any comments or questions. Um, you can shoot me an email at um, allison at pediatricsurvivalswim.com. Um, you can also uh, look for me on Instagram and Facebook or leave me a comment here. Let's talk about it. Let's see how I can help and get you on track for making your, your babies safe in the water. Um, so thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.